God, we approach your throne room in glory. God, we consider and we even ask the question, what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that thou visited him? Made us a little lower than the angels and crowned us. God, you've crowned us with glory so that we can give you glory. We can return the glory back to you. Father, one more time I stand here, not in my own strength, but in the strength of who you've made me to be. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the very meditation of my heart will be found acceptable in your sight. You're my strength and redeemer. God, I pray that this word will reach the hearts of your people, that they will take in the word, the seed, into the soil of their heart, and that they would nurture it, that it will grow thereby. Holy Spirit, I love you. And I ask that you will continue to run with me that I will continue to hear your voice and speak what thus said the Lord. We bless you today. In Jesus' name we pray and God's people said, Amen. We certainly want him to overshadow us today, don't we? You're trying to take me somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verses 20 through 22. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She saith unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I shall drink of, and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can be seated. As you know, the theme of this men's month has been the alternate cup. The alternate cup, certainly challenging men, but of course, always the word of God challenges all of us. Yes. Today is no different, and I want to minister from the sermon topic, the bitter cup from segregation to desegregation. The bitter cup from segregation to desegregation. I read this chapter fully and stepped back 
in order to get a glimpse of the picture that God wanted me to see. What I saw really caused me to shake my head and understand that indeed the more things change, the more they stay the same. I am convinced that when a person or a group of people make it to the top, they somehow become focused on keeping others below them and unable to make it to where they are. In the human nature of man, there is a natural state of competitiveness. You want to be number one. You want to be chief among many. You want to stand head and shoulders above the next person. Yet in the kingdom of heaven, there is a principle that directly cuts against our natural desire to win and be the best. In the kingdom, the aim, oh my, is to have everyone equal at the cross of Calvary and to have all having equal access to heaven. Now that's equal rights. Uh huh. God said it in his word like this, 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants all saved. You and I may look at someone with our natural eyes and miss the heart of God in that all are equal souls before him. Let me quickly give you a hint as to how I chose this theme for men's month. I chose the theme, the alternate cup, because of the initials AC. I figured, <laughs> I figured there was so much talk about the America's cup that we should talk about the most important cup that there was and that there ever shall be the alternate cup the bitter cup. Yeah, yeah. Now that I have studied the text, because I'm not that deep, you know, when I choose topics, you know, I got an attitude, I choose topics. Then the Holy Spirit wheels me and then shows me, you're not, you're not smart as you think you are. Because I was really in charge of you choosing everything, right? Watch this. Now that I have studied the text, I can tell you that God has opened up much more understanding as to why He had me to choose this theme. You see, church, some look at the initials AC and think air conditioner. That's interesting. For an air conditioner impacts, hear me now, upon the immediate environment of a room. Oh, Lord. An AC will change the atmosphere of a room. Some will look at the initials AC and think, I like I did, America's Cup. Now, that's good. It is the America's Cup and the preparation thereof which is changing the climate of Bermuda. Indeed, many a person are gaining financially from the AC, the America's Cup. Yet church... Here is the thing about the air conditioner and the America's Cup. Uh, the fact of the matter is that they are both designed, Lord have mercy, to benefit a few, to benefit a certain group, to benefit a certain crowd. That's why I must choose not to focus on the air conditioner, not to focus on the America's Cup, but to solely focus on the alternate cup. For the alternate cup has been designed before the foundation of the world to benefit the entire world. Oh, church. You got to remember St. John 3, 16 and 17. For God, here's the alternate cup. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
I ain't worrying about changing the atmosphere of my hotel room, of my bedroom, of any room. I'm not worrying or concerning myself about changing the atmosphere of Bermuda. My sole concern is that not only do we change the atmosphere of Shekinah, of Bermuda, and the world through the alternate cup, but that we indeed become transformed continuously to appreciate the alternate cup. You see, you can't handle something until you appreciate it. The alternate cup. Oh yeah, watch this now. I heard that old song, he's got the whole world in his hands. The salvation wrought by faith through the blood of Jesus Christ is not for those who can afford AC. No, 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 no. He paid a debt. He did not owe. I owed a debt. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song. Amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. This is why if you offer me a seat, I want it ultimately to be that I have taken a hold of the charge of the cup of salvation to preach and spread the good tidings of great joy, the joy of Jesus all over the land. Now let me talk about the alternate cup and how it is about desegregation as I deal with the following three points. Point number one, the pre-lesson of the alternate cup, the woe. Point number two, the lesson of the alternate cup, the wonder. And point three, the post lesson of the alternate cup, the walk. Let's deal with it. Number one, the pre lesson of the alternate cup, the woo. Jesus shares with his disciples a story, a parable. Jesus wants them to understand a kingdom principle by which they must guide their service to him. The parable goes like this, verses 1 and 2. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Let me paraphrase the rest. The story basically tells us that these men were hired to work in a vineyard. Let's sort of put a modern day twist on it for $50. They start at 7 a.m. and finish, and not go off around 4, yeah. 7 to 4. Yeah. So these guys come in early in the morning, early in the morning, early in the morning, 7 a.m. Said Jesus to us, you know, Master, yeah. Okay, you're going to get $50? You agree with that? Yeah, that's great. We agree. Then they go out in the vineyard, they're working hard, hard, hard. These guys come around about noon time. The master says, you want to work? They say, yeah, 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 yeah. Say, um, I'm going to give you $50. You agree with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. They go to work. The end of the land, he's walking around. He sees some guys. He says, what are you guys doing? You guys just want to sit here doing nothing or you want a job? All right, this round 3 o'clock, quarter to 3. Knock off times 4. Yeah, man, yeah, 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 we want a job. All right, this is the pay, $50. You agree with that? Yeah, man, yes. They go ahead, they work. Everybody works to 4 o'clock. At that time, they all come to receive their pay. Those that were working since 7 a.m. saw those that, that were working since 3 p.m. got the same wage as them. And they got an attitude. But Jesus says to them, well, you didn't have an attitude when I told you how much you were going to get paid. So just be satisfied with that. You've got to hear the story. Huh? That those that came in the last minute, those that came in in the late of the day, those that hardly worked like the others got paid the same amount. You have a problem with that, but Jesus doesn't. Uh oh, you need to understand that for the rest of the story. It's all about reward.
heart and response. You know, it's not about how long you've been in the trash. It's not about how, how professional you are at what you do. I can't tell somebody who's fresh in the church that they have to wait X amount of time before they can do certain things in the church. That's how you think Jesus looks and he sees the gift and he sees the talent and he says, come on, let me put you to work. See? See? All right, all right. Now, this was an issue with those that had worked from the early hours of the day. They believed in segregation. We were here first. We have more work experience. We are the professionals. They are not worthy of what we are worthy of. Yet Jesus has to correct their wrong thinking, 13 through 16. But he answered one of them and said, friend, you know, Bermuda term, ace boy, I do thee no wrong. Didst not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine ears and go thy way. And I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? So the last shall be first. And the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. We, we call people. God goes out and chooses the one that we refuse. He chooses them. They didn't even, when, when Jesus, get enough, he said, come everybody, come everybody. And some came in at 7 a.m. Some came in at 8 a.m. Some came in at 10 a.m. These two, these other ones, they ain't coming nowhere. But he goes for them. And when he sees them, he says, I choose you. You ought to be thankful because God chooses who others refuse. God chooses those that have not even desired to be a part of the kingdom because he knows how important they are. Come on. That's where it comes from. Many are called, but few are chosen. We want to get deep with it. Study the text. So... Jesus is trying to get them to understand, get a picture of kingdom labor. There are those who you simply have to call and come and follow him. They'll do it. They'll do it. Then there are those you will have to go out and compel them. Mm -hmm. They are the chosen ones. And the bottom line is that there is only one reward, one gift, and one heaven that all shall equally receive. There is no segregation in dispensing heaven. You can't decide. I can't decide who deserves heaven. I don't have a heaven to put them in or a hell to keep them out of. When they call on the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and they yield their life and they turn their lives around and they begin to walk after the scriptures, then they deserve the same heaven that you and I have. But here, in the mindset of the initial laborers, they believe that because they began first, that they ought to get more. <laughs> it's going to be fun in a minute. Nope. <laughs> The kingdom of heaven has one set of rules and one set of rewards. This is why we must keep the standard of the Bible no matter what the standards of the law of the land are. <laughs> one Bible, one standard, one heaven. Doesn't matter how many laws the island of Bermuda passes. It will not cause you to enter into heaven if you come against the standard, the rule, the pathway, the plan, the purpose, the destiny that's written in the scriptures. Heaven will not change, will not bow 
to the changing laws of the land. Heaven stands alone. So Jesus has taught them that he operates in true equality. See, that's a catch word now. Equal rights, equal rights. The Bible has the most equal right example, the epitome of equal rights. That's why the devil has to come against the Bible for his equal rights. You have no right outside of the right of the Bible. That's it. True equal rights. And then Jesus shows them, watch this, point number two, the lesson of the alternate cup, the wonder. He shows them the lesson of the alternate cup, the wonder. Here it is. The greatest equal rights movement that has ever been and that shall ever be. Here it is. Jesus looks into the cup of service, suffering, salvation, and sanctification and decides to partake of that cup so that every sinner may have the choice to reconcile to the Father by his sacrificial work. A pathway of pain, but Jesus partook of the ultimate cup. A drink of demonic attack, but Jesus will partake of the ultimate cup. The mixture of misery, pain, and seemingly unbearable grief, but Jesus will partake of the ultimate cup. 18 and 19. Behold, watch this now. We go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed unto the chief priests and unto the scribes, and they shall condemn him to death, and shall deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify him, and the third day he shall rise again. Jesus tells them what he is about to go through. Jesus is clear. Did they all get it? Did they all get it? Did they understand that Jesus was about to go through something horrific? Jesus has taught about equality to his leaders. Did the leaders get it? Taught about a beautiful parable. Equality. Did they get it? Let's see. Let's see. 20 and 21. Then, so after he taught the lesson, Okay, then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons. They're right there. Worshiping him. Worshiping. I just wanted to know if they got the lesson. Oh, oh, catch this, catch this. So you can worship him and still miss the lesson. Oh. Okay, because we're so, well, we're worshiping him. Oh. I want to know if you're understanding he who you say that you worship, because they are worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, what will thou? She said unto him, grant that these, my two sons, may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy kingdom. They missed it. If I had gotten the lesson and my parents told me, come on, we're going to go to Jesus. And we're going to ask, I, you, you, girl, Maria, you're so brilliant, you deserve this seat. So we're going to do If they had gotten the lesson of the parable, they would have stopped their mom and said, no, my mom, Jesus doesn't think like that. And I'm going to tell you, these are disciples. These are leaders. They missed it. They missed the entire lesson. That Jesus had taught them. They missed the heart of Jesus. And yet they had the nerve to want to sit. He's sitting by me. You don't even understand me. See, 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 see. When you sit with me. Let me tell you what it means to sit up. Because some of you don't get it. But let me try to help you out. Let me try to help you out. When I sit here as a leader of God's people. And you sit next to me on the pulpit. Let me tell you what it's saying. You all just think it's cameras and lights. It's saying, Pastor, my right side, my left side, Holy Ghost. I come in agreement with you. I come up in agreement with the word you're teaching. You're preaching about Jesus. You're talking about Jesus. You're teaching about the parables. You're teaching about the principles of the kingdom. And because of that, we will sit and come into agreement with what you are saying. So the sons of Zebedee have missed the lesson, have missed the heart, and yet they want to sit by the preacher. We 
who are of the kingdom cannot lightly take our kingdom walk. I don't care how many churches wash down what they wash. I don't care how many no longer hold up the stand of holiness. Because we teach it, we preach it. That means we've got to abide by it. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Preach the word in season, out of season. Let me warn you. If you're not in total agreement, and your name comes up to sit up here, say, no, thank you. Don't condemn yourself up here. Amen. We've got to be honest because this is the kingdom. They missed it. They are thinking about a kingdom to come. About the prestige now. The royal and function. <laughs> oh, how sad when leaders miss that it is not about your proximity to Jesus and it is not about your role in being near Jesus. It is about everyone being equal and treating everyone the same. You know, let, let me say here, I had at one point just my elders. Just, just the elders. No, I just want whoever's committed. Amen. Hey, it don't matter who loves Jesus, who's going to stay at the wicked, who's going to keep the charge, who's going to be here in 15 years. I ain't got time to play. Who's going to be here in 20 years? I, it's not about your position, so take that out of your mind. It's about the condition of your heart. What you believe, what do you believe in sincerity and in truth? Jesus is about equality. Remember now, equality. Huh? Here they were again, segregating. We deserve this seat. The rest, okay. Jesus had told them the importance of desegregation. Everyone's equal. I want everyone to make it in. I want everyone to get the same reward. These fellas come up. We deserve to. They missed it. Oh, how they missed the alternate cup. That the way to be great, oh, no, see, is to serve the most and serve all equally. You want to climb up the ladder? Here it is. That's the ladder right there. That's the ladder. You want to climb up the ladder? Huh? The way you become the greatest? Sir. Watch this, one-handed throw catch. You don't serve you. You hear me? You serve the understanding of the kingdom of heaven in you. That's why when people don't serve right, I say they ain't got the kingdom in them. They're serving according to flesh. They're serving according to their circumstance. You know, they're serving well today. Next week, they're not going to serve so well. It's flesh. But look. Does God change? Okay, good. You're right. Does heaven change? That's how we have to serve. I don't serve you a certain way because you like me. I serve you a certain way because I am of the kingdom, and I'm hired, I'm employed, I'm a laborer, serving the kingdom. So you, now you can call me a minister because I've earned it. And if I serve more and more, then I understand that's the only way I become great. Many people think it's great when you are served. No, 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 no. No, no, that's you abusing the system. Do you hear me? When a leader, I hear the Holy Ghost, you know, Believes that they have to be served. Their platform. Their mindset. You, that leader, is abusing the system and is operating according to the demonic stronghold of hell. But when you understand that this is a kingdom work, then you minister, you serve, and only then do you become great. And get this. When you become great, 
You're so overwhelmed that you begin to humble yourself because you can't carry the weight of the glory that comes upon you. And God anoints you to serve. It takes an anointing to serve. You know the thing, sir? Don't ask God to call you to be a pastor. You'll find out what the anointing to serve is. Jesus, uh huh, is letting loose the key to eternal life. And that is being able to serve the kingdom of heaven by serving all men the kingdom of heaven. Serve them the kingdom of heaven. Oh, Lord, it got to be the kingdom of heaven in you. Oh, Lord, don't you dare put your hand uh, to the plow and begin to work unless you've got the kingdom of heaven within you because that's what's going to be received. Why? Because it's a spiritual work. You may not even say anything, but emanates and emanates out of you by what spirit you are of. Hmm? So these two brothers, they want to be served. They want to sit at the front table have the spotlight on them and to be served by the peasants. That's what they want. It's like with them it's leadership or no shit with you. <laughs> I heard people say, Pastor, I just cleaned the toilets. Pastor, I don't need no title, no nothing. I'm just your humble servant. I don't say nothing, you know. But when the day and the time comes, when the title's taken, where's the humble servant? They're going. Don't, don't say things, you know me. Let's just, just, just be honest. God has called me to be careful. And so Jesus came, Jesus now, not to be served, but to serve. We must follow after Jesus. They were right in the very midst of Jesus. Heard Jesus talk. Jesus right there talking, rapping. Could hear every word, every syllable out of his mouth. I mean, Jesus was the perfect teacher, wasn't he? Said so, so they heard the perfect teacher. But they heard with their outer ear. They heard with their natural ear. And as long as you sit in the house of God and you hear by your natural ear, all right, preacher, how, how, how you know when you hear with your natural ear? Because you hear the word for somebody else. Because the funnel of your ear, let me just show you what I mean, the funnel of your ear naturally leads to the inner ear. Outer ear, middle ear, inner ear. It's all about you. But those that operate in the flesh, it's all about somebody else. If you don't take this word personally, you will not grow in your walk. They heard him, yet they are missing the message of Jesus to the inner ear, their spirit. Why? Because there's still too much of them. When it's too much of you, you're going to miss me. I don't care how well I preach. No matter. If it's too much of you, then you will miss the message just like they did. See, you got to picture it. They walked with Jesus. This ain't, this ain't somebody we don't. Disciples walk with Jesus. They knew his pattern of war. They knew his sleeping patterns, his awaken patterns. They knew what he ate. They knew the type of, you know, humor he had. Come on now. Yet when he began teaching, well, that's another thing. I hear your Holy Ghost. I believe that you can become too familiar with the preacher, with the teacher, and therefore you can miss the message. You hear me? That's what they did, James and John, with Jesus all the time. But then I hear Jesus. You gotta hear this word for yourself. Take in this word and say, God, if I take in this word, like you want me to take in this word, I know that after I do so, I'm gonna be more like you. Blaming the other person, looking at the wrongs of the other person. Look in. They missed it. The looking at 
others through their own perspective. And they deem that they're not worthy. We are. Got to stay away from them. We'll hang with you, Jesus. <laughs> the wonder is how you can sit under the teaching of Jesus and walk away missing the very lesson that Jesus taught. I can tell you it happens all the time. All the time. Point number three. Talk about from segregation, you know, picketing. <laughs> To desegregation. Point three, 24, 25, listen to it. And when the ten, because you know you got 12 disciples, right? You got to look at it. <laughs> can you imagine Thomas? Can, can, can you imagine if Thomas heard James and John or the mama? I can see him going to, now that day he's going to choose Peter for the purpose. Hey, Pete, tell me I didn't hear what I just heard. <laughs> tell me I did not just hear James and John talk about taking the seat next to Jesus. Didn't even look all day. Been here as long as, matter of fact, he called me before he called him. Anybody deserve that seat, I do. Now imagine if Peter was the one who initially heard it. Not Thomas, Peter. Peter would say this. Gives, gives the other disciple a nickname. Vince. <laughs> Vincey boy. Now listen here. Listen here. I think I just heard something, you know. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting a little riled up, man. I feel my sword in the sheath. I'm telling you. Did, I, did, 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 did they just put me down? I'm sorry, put us down? Did, they did? Why, we can take them, boy. We can take them. Ain't going to be no seats left for them, Arthur. We can take them out. You see? See, see? That's the way you've got to hear the Bible and understand. Two of them went forward. Ten of them were discounted when there were 12 disciples. Here you go, you go, watch this. Twelve is the number of God's perfect governmental order. The devil wants to always break it down to ten, which is the number of man's order. God establishes twelve. The devil wants to get at least two. How many spies went in? Come on, I ain't got time for that. Huh? God always wants his order. And the devil wants always to bring about disorder. If he can get the two against the ten, he is happy with that. And you have to decide, am I amongst the two or am I amongst the ten? So, so, so look, let me read it here again. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation. They were mad, y'all. Ron her thinking oh, the just disciples they just went and prayed about it. No. Move with indignation. Watch this. Against the two brethren. Let me drop this here and leave it here. Your test, no matter if you're a part of the two or ten, will always reveal what's still in you that God has to deal with. Read the text some more. Whether you're part of the two or the ten, how you respond in every situation reveals what you still have left in you that you have to give to God. 25 says, but Jesus called them unto him. Come on, come, 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 come here. And said, ye know that the princes of the Gentiles <laughs> exercise dominion over them. And they that are great exercise authority over them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain. There are 12 disciples. Two of them have vexed the other 10 disciples by their request. This creates segregation or separation. That's what the devil wants between disciples. What does Jesus do? He calls them together. I can't tell you. A meeting. Time for meeting. Right? Regular teaching's canceled. No parables tonight. 
Got to meet with the disciples. Jesus is always trying to get his disciples together. Jesus then does what Jesus does. He teaches. He teaches them. I love it. That they must have patience to understand why these two brothers think the way they do. He explains to them that they come out of an environment where you treat a person based on the level of their authority. They came to the table already with certain ingrained behavioral attitudes that they learned from where they came from. Everybody ain't going to come from where you came from. Everybody ain't going to think how you think. Everybody's not going to understand how you understand. Hey, if you're a Russell, you're competitive. You're not going to lose. Some families don't mind. Well, we'll lose. We'll pray about it. Not me. I'm going to win. But I can't kick up against the person that don't think like me. I got to bring everybody together and try to bring about an understanding. <laughs> you know, Jesus, you know who is among you. Get treated. This is back how these brothers came from. Better than regular citizens. That's where they, that's why he says, go back to the scripture. You know that the princes of the Gentiles, where they come from, the world, exercise dominion over them, have taught them to be in charge. Jesus, Jesus. I hear it's a mouse, Holy Ghost. The princes of the Gentiles have, have taught them how to have dominion, have taught them how to be leaders, have taught them how to run things. Oh, but well, why would Jesus call them? If that's how they've learned, why would Jesus call them? Because Jesus wants to take your natural giftings, huh? your natural abilities, what you've learned in the world, bring it into the kingdom, put it under the blood, and make it good for the kingdom so that you can be a benefit to the kingdom. Put your hands together for the kingdom. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Got to teach you that. So don't kick up because they can't. Well, soon said they don't understand yet. I made it as clear as day. They come from a different space. <laughs> you gonna be beat? No, no. This is unacceptable. They should know clearly. You gotta understand where they come from. <laughs> they can't help it. They have to be taught by the pastor. Watch this now. Because somebody's saying, well, what, you, you've been teaching them for eight years. No, no. But they've got to open up their heart to receive it. It's more than hearing because they were hearing Jesus. But you've got to hear and receive it unto yourself. And I feel like having a moment here because I feel like I've got disciples. Disciples who understand. Pastor, I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're trying to teach us. You're trying to teach us the importance of, of being different but being the same. The importance of coming from different backgrounds but coming together for the beauty of the kingdom. The importance of understanding that your brother and your sister may work a certain way, may think a certain way, may do a certain way. But if we can embrace each other, come under the umbrella of the love of Jesus Christ and then we will understand that everyone is someone in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Everybody. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Yeah. Yes, yes. God sent his son to die for the whole world. It wasn't a portion of people. It's Iraq and Iran. Huh? It's the homosexual and the heterosexual. Because guess what? The homosexuals are not the only ones doing things wrong. Some heterosexuals are... Oh. Huh? 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 So, so it's, they're not all bad. They're all on their way somewhere, just like you and I. You got to get it. I'm not about segregation. No, we're going to come together. <laughs> all right, let me carry on. I've got like 10 minutes. Here we go, watch this. 
But Jesus, this is Jesus now trying to teach a lesson. But it shall not be so. Do you see that? Do you hear that coming? I don't care. Oh, Lord Jesus. Jesus takes authority. I don't care how you behaved out there. I don't care how you think about each other. I don't care how you consider what this person has done. When you come into the kingdom mentality, look at it. But it shall not be so among you. We will not have it here. Ah, you see that authority right there? Huh? You see that kingdom mindset right there? I don't care who says that it's all right to have order against a brother and sister. The devil is a liar. That is not unity. And so we've got to come together. Yes, at times we will go through. But my God, get through. Get through not for your sake, but for Jesus' sake. Don't you let him take in that bitter cup be in vain. He took off the bitter cup so that you and I would not have to remain bitter, but we will get better. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever shall be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever shall be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and give his life a ransom for many. That's the issue right there. There are some who are holding others a ransom. Rather than allowing yourself to be held ransom. It's the difference. In other words, I will make sure that I don't hold all against you. Even when you hold it against me. One of you is closer to being the greatest. Learn the lesson, people. Don't miss it today. Jesus wants you to understand that in his kingdom, with those who desire to follow after him, you will have to learn that you do not treat one another differently based on your position, title, or place of authority. In, in other words, you must get out of the place of segregation. Jesus initiates desegregation. It's always about making people equal. Until leaders understand this passage of scripture fully, leaders will always look to be served, and leaders will only desire that certain people serve. <laughs> I'm going to leave that right there. Mm -hmm. This is not how Jesus lived. Then Jesus shows them how it goes. This is called talent show. Not show and talent. Talent show. I read, little read, picture, 29, 34. So remember now, it's taught about the parables, right? Equality. Here come the sons. They want to be biggest. He corrects them. He says, equality. Jesus just teaching equal rights, equal rights, equal, equal, equal. Let's see what happens next. 29. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside, when they heard that Jesus passed by, cried out, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them. Rebuked them. <laughs> because they should hold their peace. Rebuked them. But they cried out the more, saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. Jesus stood still and called them and said, What will ye that I shall do unto you? They said unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes, and immediately they received sight, and they followed him. Hold on. Jesus had just told them all about equality. Shared them two, three pictures of equality. After Jesus teaches you, here comes your task. You think Jesus teaches you a lesson just to play hopscotch, waste time? He's going to teach you the lesson and teach you the test. All right, disciples, you start calling after Jesus when I come near you. You understand? And love. So Jesus, come on, disciples. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus now Jesus, Jesus, keep it going. Jesus, Don't stop. Jesus, Jesus. Can you hear them calling? Jesus, Jesus, Can you hear their desire? Jesus, Jesus, Can you hear their passion? Jesus, and what do the disciples Jesus, do? We rebuke you. Stop your noise. Stop your noise.
choice. If Jesus had left them, they would have left this man on the street, dying, ignored, and on the way to hell. But thank God Jesus then decides, I'm going to stop. I'm going to ask you what you want. And then when you tell me what you want, I'm going to do more than just say, I'm going to do. I'm going to touch a situation. What's that? He touches their eyes. He touches their eyes. Why? Because they are about to see something that 12 disciples missed. They're about to get it. And when they get it, when you get it, they got up. And many are called. Few are chosen. And they follow Jesus. They follow Jesus. Huh? Huh? They follow, they follow Jesus. Because Jesus is about equality. Disciples miss it. The church misses it. We can't miss it. That when they're crying out on the streets, crying out in our families, crying out in our hearts, we can't, if our holy sound say, oh, be quiet, but we've got to go and talk them. And see what they want. Put your hands together for Jesus. Almost done here. I haven't lost focus that I'm talking about the bitter cup. Because all of this surrounds the bitter cup. The ultimate cup. Because for you and I, our challenge is how, like the disciples, do we walk out day by day what Jesus just taught us? Huh? That's the struggle of pastor has with disciples and congregants. That as I teach it, do you really get it? That all are equal? That we can't separate? As soon as somebody comes and starts talking with me, about me with uh, this person, I said, that's separating my body. That's slicing me open. It's, I, it, I can't have that. I, I'm, not, I'm not a suicidal pastor or preacher. You can't come to me and cut. I shall tell y'all the whole thing. This church is going to be built up, Ella. This, this church is going to understand unity. Th this church is going to understand the heart and the mind of Jesus. So we've got to watch ourselves in our daily walk when we leave these church doors. Are we cutting? Hmm? Are we rebuking each other? Huh? Are we missing the heart of God? These who the disciples would have rejected saw and followed Jesus. Jesus is still teaching it to our disciples, trying to get them to understand. And you want to know why I get excited about new converts and new people that come in. They're going to grab on to the teachings. The rest I have to try to convince. Tell them a story this day, a story on Tuesday, a me doing Wednesday, another story on the Sunday. Let's try to teach you about Jesus. Hmm? There's none so blind as he or she that will not see. I heard that by the Spirit. Will not. You've made it your will, your self determined mindset. I will not see it that way. That's why we have to take our will and break it and humble ourselves. It's humility. When I drive, I've got a few of those guys, and when they see me, one guy, you, some of you wouldn't go near him. He said to me one day, he said, flag me down. He said, you didn't speak to me. I, I, was, I said, I didn't. I said, well, what's your name? I said, I'm inviting you down to church, and forgive me for not speaking to you. Ever since then, I lay on the horn, and I too, he didn't come to church yet. But suppose he's my test. Suppose he's the chosen one. Look at Jesus. 
So Paris is going to be a makeover one day. And he's the very one who, who has to be my armor bearer. Because I have some armor bearers that come in looking sharp. And they went out looking sharp too. But was suppose my real help was in the street. That's why you can't. Come on up in here. The work of the church is out there. Let me wind this down. Right here. Director. After you partake of the bitter cup, the alternate cup, you will then enter into a time of service where you will be called to touch the world of those blinded by sin. It is not until you are doing the work of Jesus that you can claim to have said yes to the ultimate cup. Doing the work of the Lord is bitter. Right? Doing the work of the Lord is bitter. But I promise you, the end of it is always sweet. It's bitter. Sweet. It's bitter. Sweet. That if you want to get to the sweet, you got to go through the bitter. Somebody in here, you've not made up your mind. You've not made up your heart to choose God, but you feel something. Pray, saints, pray in this room. You felt it when you walked in. <laughs> That's the voice of Jesus, the heart of Jesus, drawing you, touching you, calling you, choosing you. Why? Because of the value of you. I'm talking to you. Somebody's near you. You're ministering to them. It's time. Time's up for the games. Time's up for delay. It's time for God's purpose. Well, there's no place that can be fine unless you're mine. I believe. Yeah.